الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما أما بعد يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أو يهو بليب فير الله أز يشول بي فير and they not accept on the state of Islam may Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most merciful grant us this great gift to die on the state of Islam اللهم أمين يا رب العالمين in the khutab that we will be sharing, we're trying to help ourselves dig in the book of Allah, cleanse some of the understanding, some terms and concepts to help us be traveling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in firmness. And the situation of a human being in this life, in his journey of existence, there's a lot of questions, and this question, the answer of this question, help one really to, to design, to plan his journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in journey of the existence, journey of the struggle and the striving. Every human being is striving and struggling in this life. However, many of them, they do not know, or they ignore or go neglecting that they're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but those who make their objective, the fear of standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then their struggling is done according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the questions that someone will ask, what we really define the self? When someone is said, what define you as a person? I say, I am so-and-so. But when you say, I am so-and-so, it's like, is your root, your origin, your color, you, you know, depends on your parents. But if we say, yes, we are, you know, commanded to love our parents, to cherish them and honor them. But if you go to some, you know, forefather, you might, you don't know them at all. So actually you are dissident from people that you do not know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كما, uh, he brought you, as he said, subhanallah, من قومي ذريتي ذريتي قوم آخرين, from the offspring of other people. So Allah called them other people. Therefore, who define the self? What really define ourself to begin with? And this question, by someone as our eminent scholar in the past, they always make like supposition, suppose that this is exists. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes also in this way to help you and help us to understand many of the meaning of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the meaning that we read, but I don't say we don't comprehend, but we just pass over it. We don't try to just, uh, you know, analyze it. But when you have certain supposition in your life, help you to analyze and stuff, you say, yeah, yeah, I, I need to reflect on such a thing. So if someone, for example, imagine that he has someone like him, exactly. Is this person that was like you, believing that he is the origin and you are the, the origin one, that he's a copy of you, and he believing that you are a copy of this person? That's imagination. Are you going to be the same? When it comes to a crossroad and everyone is going to get his path, are you going to be the same? Are you going to be thinking the same way? Are you going to have the same motivation? Are you going to have the same goals? Therefore, the answer is no. It's obvious. It's no because it depends on some, you know, circumstances, the events, and everything that someone will be facing is going to change. So what it really construct and build and who make us who we are, it's not why how we look like. It's not like how we growing up or the thing that, you know, your bone, your flesh, your face. It's not that who are who you are. This is amana. This is actually trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that being given you. And this amana, the face that you have, it might be a big trial for you. The way we look, it might be a big trial for you. Someone who is like very good looking is a trial and not good looking is also a trial. 
So subhanAllah, this is an amana is in the same time as a test. But who are you when you are thinking to define your own self? And this is how in this supposition we say, so there is something that we need to find in the Quran. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're going to look back when you read in the Quran and you're specifying this ayat that is going to help you to define who you are. And defining who you are based on what? On your color or your, or your roots? Not at all. It's based on the way you face the next event that you're going to face. Based on the choice that you're going to make in the encounter of any difficulty that you're going to be hitting you next time. Therefore, our shakhsiyya, our personality, is, is constructed, is built by own hand. It's like we are sowing our own shakhsi, our own personality. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, and this is with this understanding, then you're going to look to the life in different perspective in a way, the action that you do is going to define your own self, is going to make, construct the ego who you are, is going to make that human being who you are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you just reflect on this in the Quran, always say, I'm going to reward you because of what you've been doing. I'm going to regard your deeds because of all your own deeds, which is action. You're going to be inherited, inshallah, of the paradise because of bikma kanu ya'malun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in Surah uh, Al Ali Imran, when he was given us the account of Ghazwat, the battle of Uhud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالَ وَلْيُمَحِّصَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَمْحَقَ الْكَافِرِينَ After certain events, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'm targeting here, the purpose here is to cleanse and purify the believer and destroy those who show the disbelief. Therefore here, the ayah before it, if you read it, قَالَ إِيَمْسَسْكُمْ قَرْحٌ If a wound touch you, the opposing people who facing you also, another wound touch them. So you are similar in the pain. Which is, comes as a conclusion, the ibtilaat, the trial, the difficulty, the tribulation that we go through in our life is a necessity. Why? Because that's what make you as a person. That's what constructing and building your own personality, who you are. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this surah, قَالَ إِنْ يَمْسَسْكُمْ قَرْحٌ فَقَدْ مَسَّ الْقَوْمَ قَرْحٌ مِثْلُهُ وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ لِدَوِّلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ These days, with a variety and alternative, you know, events, difficulty, things happen, we alternate them among people. So the alternation of days with varied and difficulties, events, this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he's saying in the ayah, لِيَعْلَمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا To see who are, who are the believers among you. To make evident and obvious those true believers. And then those when they face the event, when they come to face some difficulty and they stand firm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow on them the gift to take them as shuhada. قَالَ وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ He select among you the shuhada. Therefore, as a believer, Believing in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he need to reflect on his life and on his personality. You are, you know, based on what you are acting, based on what you are doing. What make you the next event is going to decide of your future. It's going to, it's either you're going to be in the path of the purification or the path of the, of leading astray. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you or have you to fight, face a trial, is your choice who going to make your own self. He's your choice who going to define the next step in your life. يمحص أو يمحق يهدي أو يضل الاشتباء أو إغواء so he purify or destroy guide or mislead and Allah سبحانه وتعالى select or lead astray and this is all based Allah سبحانه وتعالى make the people to be submitted to His absolute will as He said وتلك الأيام نداولها بين الناس everyone is equal under the will of Allah but what you make the difference is your choice when you face the event when you face you encounter the difficulty or anything that is going to be happening to you is your decision how you going to encounter it how you going to plan for it how you going to decide this is what going to construct is is going to build who you are. If you try to reflect as a believer, want to say, subhanAllah, so if this is this way, then at any event, at anything that is going to be happening to me, I need to be trained. 
Why? Because when I'm going to face it, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to take a step. I'm going to either to go to Allah or go somewhere else. Or maybe I'll take a decision and I have a very weak nafs that I will be with very neglectful way, distracted way. I will take away that leading me to the path of the distraction instead of leading me to the path of the purification. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala liyumahis alladhina amanu. And Allah said it in the toward the end of Surah Muhammad that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قال, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa nakum. Allah is going to test you. Till we know those who strove in his sake and those who are patient. We're going to test and try all what you're saying. If you say, I love Allah, if I say, I love the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to have you encounter event into your life to show truly you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do so, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be obvious for you that you truly love Allah, then He's going to elevate you. Now, if the believer is planning and we all plan for our life, we plan for our career, we plan for the business, we plan for our studies, don't you know want to plan for your life? I mean, as you're planning for your career or for your business or for whatever someone he's doing in the way, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a blessing in all what you're doing, if it be halal, so plan for your life. So when someone say, I'm going to encounter tomorrow, you never know what he's going to be encountering, what should be your decision. But you say, I know my decision should be for the sake of Allah. But what guarantee to you that is going to be in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's why it need to proceed kind of mujahada to, to strive. And the striving here help you to withdraw from yourself the weakness and withdraw from yourself the submission to the evil doing. How is that? The shaitan... When he comes, he going to do a bargain with you. But the bargain with the thing that you already have embedded with you. If someone telling you, this is, I can give you this much amount of money to do such a thing. But you know the thing is evil. You're going to say no. But if the bargain and the price is high, it might, subhanAllah, find a part in your nafs is going to accept it, absorb it. And that's when, subhanAllah, someone is going to violate the way of Allah without even knowing why, because he has part in his nafs that loves that thing. If someone is being threatened, and the threat make him to be scared, and the threat to make him to be like very filled with fear, so he has a weakness in his self that the threatening is going to have an impact on the self. Therefore, he'll give away his principle. This is what exactly they did with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Meccan period. They tried to make some bargain. They want to tell him, you can be the best among us. You can be our king. We'll give you the money you wish for. You give you this, we give you this, we satisfy all your desire. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't incline to them. And that's why when they tried and tried all this musawamat, they start to persecute and threaten and, and having the, uh, the believer to go through a harsh and hard persecution. Why? Because they didn't incline. However, the believers thinking of this, what it will be the weakness. The weakness is what the shaitan used as a weapon in his hand to have the believer kneel and change his principle. To have the believer lose his perseverance on the path. To have the believer lose his firmness on the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the first thing, when you know what make your own personality, what build who you are, it is the way how you face the next event, the next happening to you. You say, I need to practice. I need to train myself. So the training will be, how can you free yourself? from the chain of our own instant, from the chain of the desire that we have. So the shaitan or anyone, uh, anyone else in the path of the shaitan, working for the sake of the shaitan, that he will not make you kneel because of that weakness you have. It will not give you any price to change your deen. He will not threat you with anything because you only fear Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that's require a training. That require practice. That's what we call al-mujahada. If we try to give a comprehensive name for all this weakness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us in the Quran, but what this comprehensive 
characteristic or name or element or aspect in ourselves that make us to be weak inside is the love. Is the term love. Is what you love. The shaitan see what you love and he enter from that path. So when you're standing strong for the principle of Allah, for your way to be always obedient to Allah, the shaitan comes from the thing that you love. And will knock us down from that part. And when we say what is the meaning of love truly, the love is the inclination of the self to what it desire and want to have it. It might be something good or less good or permissible or something that is an illusion that people love things that does not even exist because what it truly really exists, what you have it here and the hereafter. But the hereafter, when you don't have it, then it's an illusion, it's a wahm or things that is totally haram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after this introduction on this concept, if I read for you this ayah, you're going to hear it with a different way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah At-Tawbah, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ Say, if your fathers, وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ your children, وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ your brother and sister, وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ and your spouses, وَالْمُوَالٌ اَقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا A wealth that you are gained, that you are stored, that you are accumulating. And قَالْ وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْسَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا And a business and a commerce which you really fear its decline. قَالْ وَمَسَاكٍ تَرْضَوْنَهَا Dwells home that you are pleased with. If all the things that are halal, if all the things that in the beginning loving of the parents is an obligation, of the children is an obligation, of the, of the spouses, it is an obligation, of the, of the rahim, which is honoring the rahim is an obligation, and then it comes to the commerce, is halal, comes to have money, is halal, is recommended, comes to have a home, that's your second, that tranquility. So all of it is halal. But if it is dearer to your heart, you love it, more than Allah and his messenger, and look what he said, and striving in his sake. So the striving here comes an action. Because when you put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above everything, and then his messenger, and striving in his sake, that actually what is going to make you as a person, who you are, is going to define who you are. Because if someone loves his children, that he'll give everything for them. And we do. But when it comes to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what are you going to do? Are you going to be someone, an ugly, evil person, because someone threatened you to take your children, for example? And here the event is going to say, I love Allah more or I love my children more. Because in loving Allah is loving your children. You might give away your deen because of your children or because of your spouse or because of your business. But subhanAllah, when you think that you're doing good for yourself, it's actually you denying your own self. You're changing yourself. You're betraying your own self. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala added with lover, dearer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be love to you, dear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dearer to you. And his messenger, and he adds the striving in his sake, because the striving is the action, the constant action of striving. So at every event, you choose Allah. At every event, you choose the path of Allah, the path of the Prophet. That's how you honor yourself. But if we love things in a deliberate way, we love things in an innocent way. Someone loves his commerce. He always think about it. He wake up early in the morning to get and open it and everything. And it's very dear to his heart. When there's, subhanAllah, like a, a loss in profit, he feel like someone devastated. And then when it comes the way of Allah, he does not care. Why? Because he has something that filled his heart. He cannot even stand, even maybe to pray or to stand in the prayer. He said, look how you're betraying yourself. Look how you're turning away from Allah and from your own self. Look how you're changing your morality. How you're modifying your akhlaq. Why? Because you let yourself be imprisoned by the chain of our, our own instant. By al-aghlal, the chains. And this is who we are. Therefore, what defines us as human beings, as true believers, is the action that you do, but specifically is when you encounter an action. And when it comes, you're facing 
the happening, you're facing an event, you're facing a problem. This is exactly with this crossroad. I mentioned if you are two people, you look alike, at the event, at that happening, is going to be, subhanAllah, the muftaraq at the crossroad. Everyone is going to go to a path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us many examples. I just mentioned a few of them. Allah told us, Allah had forgiven the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and al-muhajireen, al-ansar, those who followed him in the time of distress, in the hour of difficulty. It was Tabuk. It was Tabuk. In Tabuk, it was very difficult time. So the Prophet sallallahu called them to march toward Tabuk. But some of them, they've been inclined heavily to the earth. Why? Because it was a very difficult time. It was very hot. It was very, you know, very tight in the economic way. They didn't have enough food. Umar radiallahu ta'ala in the narration, he said, we were in Tabuk and a group of people, they will have one date. Everyone will lick that date and he'll drink some water and he pass it to his brother because they didn't have food. It was so hot. And it was, subhanAllah, the water is, was, you know, scarce water, so they didn't have enough water. He said, to the point that we feel our neck is going to, to be cut off from dryness. And this is, was some people, they start to have doubt, not of Iman, but doubt. Are we on the right path? Is the Prophet Sallallahu leading us in this expedition to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the way to choose in this very difficult time, to whom you're going to hold fast to, to your opinion or to what you think is good to be in a garden and laying down and let the Prophet Sallallahu with the companion do what they're doing. And this is Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala call it Sa'at Al-Usra. So the distress time, it wasn't a fight. A distress time, it was the choice. You go or you don't go. You obey or you do disobey. You stand firm for the truth or you turn away, you see like you didn't see it. Are you going to change the munker or ignore it? Are you enjoy the good or you don't care about it? And that is what's going to make who you are. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qal, thumma taba alayhim, those who have their heart inclined to doubt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them, forgive them to bring back their heart to be firm on his path subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a dua and has been narrated in the seerah for Allah to, to support the da'wah of Islam with one of the two Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab or Umar, or Umar ibn Hisham who is Abu Jahl. Both of them, they get equally the message. Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he got his sword heading where to try to find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to kill him. When they told him, why you don't check your sister, she accepts Islam. He went there and he hit her, but after he hit her, he felt like some rahmah. This is, this is my sister. And he saw them reading a page. He said, can I read this? She said, no, go and wash yourself and then you can read it. So he finds, subhanAllah, that humility, that modesty. And he took the book of Allah, some of the words of Allah. He read them. And that was the event. That was that was uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, who made who is Umar at that moment. He's going to really acknowledge the greatness of this word that he's reading, who's going to neglect it. Like Abu Jahl, he had the same, he had the same test. He's been brought the book of Allah. He's been listening to the Quran from the fee of Abi Bakr. He knows when they told him, and one who narrating, he said, do you think that Muhammad is a liar? He said, Wala wallah, Muhammad is al Amin. He's the trustworthy. We know he never lied. Told him, do you think what he's bringing is wrong or is something that is not true? He said, no, it is the truth. Told him, then why you don't kneel or why you don't accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, we've been in competition with Bani Hashim. They can do, you know, if they bring and slaughter 100 camel for the, for the pilgrims, I will do the same. If they give them water, we'll do the same. But to bring us someone who receive inspiration and revelation from the sky, how can we compete with that? Qala wallahi, I will never believe in him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in surat 
الانعام قال قد نعلم انه لا يحزنك الذي يقولون we know that it make you hurt what is being said but these are ظالمين this type of ابي جهل they're not denying what you're saying they are arrogant they don't want to accept it because of envy because of arrogance and look ابو جهل he died where killed in Badr and thrown in Al Qalib and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admit him billah in the worst among the evildoers. Wa Umar he was a shaheed standing in the mahrab in Salat al Fajr killed by Ghadr. It was an event that it changed the life of every one of them. It was an event that it changed the life of the magician. They have the might and the grandeurs and the greatness and the great fortune of Pharaoh. And in the side, they have Musa with his brother who's saying the truth. Are we going with the fame? Are we going to go with the money? Or are we going with Musa who does not have anything? But when they saw it, because they said, by the might of Pharaoh, we're going to be the winner. But when they saw with their own eyes things that they cannot deny, they show humbleness and Allah helped them. They want to sujood. That's the humility. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed their life from sorcerer because on one sajda, the deepest sujood ever made, to make them from those believers that we recite their event to the end of the time. It was an action. What do you know about the Sahara? Nobody knows about them, how many there were, maybe some in the, some of the narration, who are they, from where they came. We don't know anything. We don't know even if Pharaoh crucified them. But we don't want, we know one thing, that they make the sajda and they said to Pharaoh, we don't care. No harm. We are craving for Allah to forgive us because we were the first believers. Will we be who we are Truly, if you get to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when event come to hit you, you will say, La dhair. There is no harm. I stand firm with Allah. My only objective is to be forgiven. That is the true believer. That is, if we want to honor ourselves, to build who we are, to become who we are by our action, by our firmness. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be firm on the path. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru al ghafurur rahim. Bismillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala al nabi al mustafa amma ba'd. Dear brother, respected sisters, the travel and the journey of every one of us in this life. It is already ordained and in Allah's knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in every step you do, you're defining the next step. If you want to know who you truly are, you have to look at your choice. If you want to be the best of who you can be, therefore, free yourself from the chain of the love that we have in our heart. Put them within a structure that we serve those we love, not we betray those we love. By putting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, by to putting his first Prophet sallallahu and then by striving in his sake. And striving in his sake is as we have defined by standing and say, Ya Allah, I am with you. To not kneel, to not turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I read for you some of the ayat. And it will be now with a slightly different understanding. Why? Because you're going to see in this ayah what defines us is our action. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا Man is created halua. Al halua is mean when evil touch him, when bad thing touch him, he's complaining all the time. And when good touch him, he will hold. He does not want to share. And this is the state of many of us, if not every one of us has such a thing. And this, subhanAllah, what define us. So you see the action, the event that you face is it changes. We are one holding and other complaining, but what purify us is a salah Illa al-musallin, except those who perform. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this. he didn't say perform a salah He said al-musallin, he came them, he called them al-musalli, the one who prays. 
And the prayer, ikhwani, if we do understand, is the greatest gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. Remember in the khutbah of the Hamd, the first thing you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, you'll find overwhelmed with all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. You are overwhelmed by the gift that Allah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the next step, you make out of your salah in this event that you're going to be, be purifying. Allah give it to you five times a day as a gift. To make that event who help you to be purified. To make that event who going to help you who you are. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be or to make us those good one, righteous ambassador of the peace, firm on the path, persevering to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa khina adhab al-nar. Allahumma thabbit aqdamana ala siratika al-mustaqim. Allahumma aj'anna min al-mu'minin al-muslimin. Allahumma aj'anna alayka mutawakkilin. Bika mu'minin. Ilayka nukhasim. Wa bika nuhakim. Ya arham al-rahimin. Ya rabb al-alamin. Wa akhir da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabb al-alamin. Wa aqim al-salata irhamukumullah.